got friends there on wars. The first world war and then the second world war. In 1940, the Europeans started their war and drew Africans into it. Ended in 1945, they returned to their villages. In Uganda, those who survived belonged to the 7th Battalion of King's African Rifles, named the Aba Seven. It was at that time that a son was born to Amos Kaguta and Esteriko Kundeka. They named him Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. Young Museveni was raised in a strict and rich pastoral culture of the Banyankole Bahima nomads of Western Uganda during the turbulent post-World War II era. From his recollections, his birth was heralded by major events in the region, a mass vaccination of cattle against radar pest, the death of a king, the Omgabe of Ankole Kahaya II, and the installation of another a year later. As a young boy, his grandmother wanted Museveni to wear calf skin, but Mzee Kaguta bought clothes which the boy wore through the various schools in Muyongo, Mshenyi, Kienkobe, and Jamate. It was during his time at Jamate that Museveni met Eria Kategaya, Martin Mwesiga, who later became his colleagues in the struggle. At Jamate, Museveni also met Janet Kataha, who he later married and played a key role in Museveni's family and political life. Museveni had a photographic memory that earned him a place at Mbarara Junior School and subsequently into Ontari School. Mr. John Baptist Kawanga is a practicing lawyer and former member of parliament who studied with Museveni both at Ontari and Dar es Salaam University. I arrived on a Friday afternoon at Ontari School and asked for the headmaster in the evening. And the boys told me, why do you want him? I said, I've just been admitted to school. I want to come in. The boys told us, you go to the notes board. I went to Mbaguta house, and then they showed me my bed in one of the, that dormitory. Now in Mbaguta house was also one other young man, Yoweri, was seven. And then after about two weeks, there were supposed to be elections for history society, debating society. I speak for myself and the entire school boys get excited. They elect me secretary for history society. And Museveni is president history society. So that's how we started. First met Museveni in 1961. Uh, I was then in S3 and he came in S1. A very religious and devoted Christian, and he was a member of the Scripture Union. And we first met in the debating society, the entire school debating society, where I was active and where he too was active. Kategaya became president of the debating society and then a host of other people. When the same class, I think we had Rosindana, who, is, who, is, who has been at IGG and so many things, it was also the same class. Ntari School was a non-denominational public school which exposed Museveni to a truly national community of students. Ntari School had pupils from all over the country, and not only from Uganda, but also across from Tanzania, and also students from Rwanda. So it was a cosmopolitan school. For the first time in my experience, I discovered that the Karamajong also go to school. Because of the negative propaganda against them, I thought now Karamajong ever goes to school. But uh, there, I found uh, Mr. Roll, uh, who eventually became, I think, permanent secretary. And I thought that if we wanted to build 
a Uganda nation. Uh, that was the best way to do it. In 1967, both Kawanga and Museveni got admitted in Dar es Salaam University. Makeri was the premier university. Uh, Dar es Salaam was a new university. But Museveni chose Dar es Salaam. And I think it was not an accident. You don't know why I came to study here. I came to study here not because there was no university in Uganda. But I was attracted by the ideas of Mwari Munyerere. I was not interested in the, the politics in Uganda. Because I could see they were not. So there were, there were no political spectacles in Uganda. That's why I came here to Tanzania. I was not looking for education, I was looking for politics. The colonial educational system did not go well with Museveni. For example, he rejected the racist legal interpretation in the Amkeo versus Regina case. That explains why he did not pursue law. It used to be used just to show how the colonial attitude about our Ugandans and then the legal framework would develop. I think it arose out of a question of should a, a wife give evidence against her husband. And in the British, the marriage is so close that the wife should not be giving evidence against her husband. But in this particular case, the judge said, in, fact, in the case of Africans, the, their marriage is not marriage. It's wife purchase. <laughs> they purchase their wife, their, their commodities. So there is no reason why that kind of wife should not testify against husband. That's the distinction. Yusuf came up, it was actually started by Museveni. I think after all, after the being exposed, the roadless, the water, I said, look, I think we better set up an organization involving students of Africa, you know, to revolutionary students, and kind of discussion and see how we can participate in the liberation. So this organization was joined by very many people. Museveni started it, we were involved. Muruwanyamuru was there, Wapakabulo, and, and many others. And it, it gave me very good contact. So when I came here, I got, I got in contact with Mwarimu. I got in contact with Samora Mashel. And then when it came to sort out our issues, these contacts were very, very useful. <laughs> in December 1968, Museveni, the president of USAF, organized a trip for seven students to visit northern Mozambique. Because of that USAF activities, we got close to the liberation movements. And one of the movements that that in, in Tanzania was Frelimo, led by late Dr. Mondlane. I think it was to prove that this was so, that one time he organized that students from the University of Daslam go to Mozambique, first of all, to visit and see these liberated areas. Because this was coordinated by Mr. Museven, who was the leader of Yusuf at that time. On completing his university education, Museveni was recruited into the Uganda Civil Service. Obote's dictatorial schemes and tendencies culminated in the coup led by General Idi Amin on the 26th of January, 1971. For eight years, Uganda was ruled by military dictatorship and all opposition crushed with the most brutal force. During this time, the will of democracy in Uganda ground to practical hold and the country descended into economic chaos. Museveni, Obote, and Ugandan exiles based in Tanzania made an abortive attempt to overthrow Amin in September 1972. The attack was an absolute disaster. With all the resistance crushed inside Uganda, salvation had to come from outside. As 
succession of events followed. In a surprise move, Amin annexed the Kagera salient with more swagger than military prowess. Then, the Tanzanian People's Defense Force, CPDF, made a strategically superior military counter-attack, thus spelling Amin's force off Tanzania's territory. Ugandan exiles in the neighboring Tanzania met in Moshi to work out a strategy for ousting Amin. Finally, a combination of forces of Ugandan exiles led the attack against Amin's forces in Uganda through Mutukula with the support of TPDF. In 1979, Idi Amin was thrown out of power, forcing him to flee into exile. These successive governments that came to power after that were overthrown one after the other as their new elite bickered in endless power struggles. The military seized power once again in 1980 and then set about to organize general elections. Obote and his Uganda People's Congress won the general elections in what was widely seen as election fraud. Nevertheless, Obote ruled for five years as the country plugged into civil war with government troops fighting guerrillas led by armed opposition chiefs, among whom was Museveni's National Resistance Army. These killings are illegal. They are separate killings of the same type as you hear as the world hears in Argentina. Now precisely the same thing has been happening here in Uganda under the regime of military Obote. And precisely the same thing was happening in Uganda during the, 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 the regime of Idi Amin. And even when the, the Uganda National Liberation Front government was in power, Obote's clique in the UNLF and in the army was again carrying out secret killings. We tried to oppose these secret killings to no avail. As for us, the Ugandan people we have made an irreversible decision. We shall defeat Mr. Obote whether he's supported by Indians, whether he's supported by Koreans, whether he's supported by Egyptians, whether he's supported by Tanzanians, whoever supports him, we shall defeat them all. Relying on our own efforts. Relying on the resilience of our people. UPC's traditional rival, the Democratic Party, settled into parliament as the official opposition. 1985, Obote was once again overthrown by his army chief, General Tito Okelo Lutwa. Trying to make peace with the rebels, General Tito Okello called a peace conference in neighboring Kenya to decide on the political future of the country. An agreement was subsequently signed as fighting flared out. In the past few weeks, the NRA has pushed northwards. On January 26, 1986, the NRA fought its way into Kampala and the military junta fled. A new leader, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, was sworn in as president. This is our story. A journey back 26 years of a man whose entire life has been dedicated to restoring a country's pride and name. His courage to face the staggering task of restoring peace and prosperity to a bleeding nation devastated by army brutalities, government corruption, and economic decline made his life some kind of enigma. Nobody should think that what is happening today, or what has, what has been happening in the last few days, is a mere change of guards. This is not a mere change of guards. I think this is a fundamental change in the politics of our country. Because in Africa, we have seen so much change that change has become meaningless. It's no longer change, but merely turmoil. This group getting rid of that group and that group doing worse than the group it got rid of. Now, please, I do not count us in that category of, of people. The National Resistance Movement, I think, is a clear-headed movement with a clear objective. In recognition of the National Resistance Movement efforts to return peace to Uganda, 
The United Nations rescheduled the World Peace Torch, first Earth Run, to pass through Uganda. The torch was received at State House in Tebe. It is an honor that Uganda was selected as one of the stop points for this torch, which is going around the world to signify the world's desire for peace. We in Uganda have fought for peace for a very long time. We have not known peace for very many years. And in the process, of the absence of peace, we lost approximately 800,000 Ugandans killed by the governments that were in power here. But through our own, our own efforts, through the sacrifices of our youth, through the sacrifices of our population as a whole, we have been able to throw out of power those agents of war and oppression we are here and we are on the move to ensure that we guarantee peace in Uganda forever so that our children live in peace and they are able to develop the resources of their country. The NRM government used its 10-point program to achieve these objectives. These series of programs chronicle the above achievements of the presidency during the last 26 years from 1986 to 2013.